convocation, the, the July meeting. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? We need to adopt our agenda. I need a motion to adopt, Mr. Make Keeley. That motion. We have a second. Mr. Quinn seconds. All in favor? Uh, number 3A, citizen participation, Dr. Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. We had no request as per poli board policy DDDH. Item 4A, written communications. And we had no written communications either. Item 5A, military liaison. I think Dr. Inyer is stepping in for Mr. Bardell tonight. I am pinch hitting for Mr. Bardell. We'll see how we, we do here. Um, <clears throat> first, with the Waynesville High School Booster Club will be hosting a golf tournament at the Piney Valley Golf Course on 21 July. Uh, we encourage everyone to come out and support the athletic programs. Uh, PI meeting scheduled for next week is actually postponed till 4 August. That's our partners in education. Uh, Waynesville, St. Robert, and Fort Leonard Wood Fall <coughs> Youth Sports Registration for Flag Football, Soccer, Volleyball, Cheerleading continues until 28 July. Parents may register in Waynesville, St. Robert at the Waynesville Municipal Center located at 100 Tremont Drive or on Fort Leonard Wood at Parent Central Registration, Building 470, Suite 1126. And that's all from the military liaison. All right, dis <coughs> 5B, district announcements. And now for the district announcements. I'm, I'm back to Brian Henry now. Uh, <laughs> this summer, the district has received state uh, in, in DESE's top 10 by 20 and national recognition at the Defense Communities National Summit and Military Impacted Schools Association annual summer meeting for its success in increasing the percentage of qualifying scores for the advanced placement exams we've taken as well as other innovations in the district. So uh, applaud the board for your leadership in that. Uh, the district will celebrate the 10th anniversary of the state championship team. A barbecue will be held from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Thursday, August 24th at the high school, and then the entire film of the game will be played at the stadium. The team also will rec be recognized at halftime of the home season varsity football opener on Friday, August 25th. As a reminder, most of our smaller schools continue to be closed during July, and we will open on August 1st. Uh, football sponsorships are available for $500 per game. For more information, call 573-842-2040. All middle school and high school athletes need physicals, and both Mercy Clinic and Waynesville Medical Plaza will be offering them for free. Detailed information was posted on Facebook earlier today. New students may begin the enrollment process online by clicking on the online registration link on the district's main website. Registration dates are as follows. Students grades 9 through 12 should go to WHS on July 27th, 28th, and 31st to register. Elementary, 6th grade, and middle school students August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Open houses, meet the teacher nights will be held August 14th and August 17th. Information about the times and dates for each school will be released this week. Convocation for all district employees will kick off on Tuesday, August the 15th. This is our staff kickoff for the new school year, and I am looking forward to the routines our faculties will have put together for us when we get back together here on August the, the 15th. Uh, first day of school for the 2017-18 school year, first day of school will be August 16th, and I know the kids will take a moment for that to soak in. As my daughter, it took a little bit for that to soak in that the, all the, the back to school stuff now is, is firmly in place at uh, all of the local stores. Uh, it will not be a late start Wednesday as that is the first day of school. And I'd also w like to welcome our new administrative personnel or at least personnel to new positions. We have Carrie Draley now as Freedom Head Principal. So congratulations, Mrs. Draley. And we have Melanie Mitchell as Woods Head Principal. That's gonna be tough on me. Melinda, I, I'll try to get that right. I, I have a hard time with the Melinda and, and, and the Melanie Mitchell, so I'm gonna get that straight. I may have to have M1, M2 or something like that, but uh, uh, congratulations, uh, welcome uh, to the positions, and we look forward to a great school year. So that's all I have. Thank all you, Mr. Right, President. Thank you, Dr. Henry. Do the consent item 6A, financials, Dr. Berger. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, July 10th, 2017, with the Missouri Securities and Investment Program, we have $49,311,345.01. CDs with the Bank of Crocker, $10.5 million. Our general account is $533,635.58. Payroll account, $1,931,568.29. Total funds for July 10th, $62,000. $276,548.88. All right. Six, uh, item 6B, six bid recommendations. Dr. Berger? Yeah, it's uh, we'll, this is light maybe even for uh, July, but they'll pick up here as we start the new fiscal year. But uh, I, I thought they were all fairly routine. Entertain any questions, of course. But Any comments or questions? Uh, all right, 6C is study session minutes, uh, 619-217, 6D, regular session minutes of June 19th, 6C, closed session minutes of June 19th. I need to, and uh, 6F is closed session minutes of 629-217. I need a motion to approve consent items. So moved. Dr. Fulmer makes a motion. Mr. Keeling second it. All in favor? 6-0, oh, Megan. 7-A, uh, two, 2017 Summer School Report, Dr. Atkins. Thank you, Mr. President. In your board docs, you have the report on from the 2017 Summer School. The district operated another successful summer school <coughs> program this year. A total of 361 high school students completed the first session and 299 completed the second session. And they were able to choose from a variety of courses, including core classes, credit recovery, PE, and other electives. And in grades K through 8, we had 1,534 students who completed summer school, and Piney Ridge served 74 students. And when we compared to last year, our, our number of students who started and ended uh, continues to be much more consistent. Any comments? 7B. Disciplinary report, 2016-17, Dr. Atkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Referrals have continued to decline over the past five years. From the 2015-2016 school year to the 16-17 school year, discipline referrals decreased by 1,222. Nearly all buildings experienced declines in referrals when compared to la the previous school year. Waynesville High School and East Elementary experienced the largest declines. At the high school, discipline referrals were reduced by 570 when compared to the previous year. There were reductions in the number of incidences of classroom discipline problems, electronic devices, theft, failure to attend Saturday school or detention, insubordination, public display of affection, and shoving and pushing, as well as tardies. The privilege card system that was implemented in the 15-16 school year was continued and additionally the tardy sweep process was continued which uh, contributed to the decline in tardies. When examining discipline data by race, all groups experienced declines in the number of referrals except for our group of Asian students, they increased by two. And there were no expulsions at the high school this past year, and in and out of school suspensions decreased. At the middle school, the total number of incidents decreased by 56 as compared to the previous year. There were reductions in academic dishonesty, assault, bullying, foul language, and insubordination. The middle school continues to utilize positive behavior referrals to recognize students who were following expectations. And additionally, they continue to increase parent contacts prior to making office referrals and continue to work on developing common expectations across classrooms to ensure consistency in the referral process. There were decreases in the number of referrals for African American, American Indian, Asian, Hispanic, and multiracial students in the 16-17 school year. 
there were 109 fewer out-of-school suspension days as compared to the previous year and a decrease of 228 in-school suspension days. At the elementary level, in-school and out-of-school con suspensions continue to be monitored. Elementary buildings are focused on using positive behavior support strategies to ensure universal expectations and procedures, as well as utilizing tier two and three interventions for students who need additional support. At the elementary level, decreases in the number of referrals were noted across ethnicity groups. And when reviewing discipline incidents overall at the elementary level, no large disparities by race were noted. At the post schools, which include Partridge, Thayer, and Wood, there are a very low number of referrals, and a few referrals can cause swings in percentages from year to year, and as such, multi-year data trends are monitored. Our buildings will continue their focus this upcoming year on ensuring that they have consistent um, processes and procedures in place so that they can continue to see their success with their and the decline of discipline referrals. Are there any questions? Any comments? Item 7C, Federal Programs Report, Dr. Adkins. Thank you, Mr. President. The Instructional Service Department works with um, federal programs and this is uh, our Title 1A, 1D, 2A, and Title III monies, and I'll explain those further on the upcoming slides. This past year, our allocations totaled $1,374,570. Title 1A is for improving the academic achievement of the disadvantaged. Our Title I buildings that we serve are East Freedom and Wood. Those funds were used to provide intervention teachers and paraprofessionals, professional development activities, to provide additional technology, um, supplemental instructional materials, as well as parent involvement activities. Supports for students who, we have students who live in transitional um, living situations, so they don't have a consistent home from night to night. And so, uh, Title I-A funds help support uh, efforts with those students as well. And then we also support our PACE preschool, which had 150 students, and those funds support the teachers and paraprofessionals, supplies, and professional development. Title I-D is um, funds that help support our students at Piney Ridge Center, and those funds assist us in funding the Piney Ridge principal position, as well as additional instructional materials and devices to support instruction for those students and professional development for the staff at Piney Ridge. Title IIA is related to teacher training and recruitment, so our Title IIA funds help with our new teacher induction program where we have mentoring and activities to prepare teachers that are new to our district as well as professional development activities that are aligned to our district goals. And also we were able to pay for two class size reduction teachers at East Elementary, which allows us to um, help lower class sizes at East. And Title III is, um, supports our English language learners. So this helps to provide additional instructional materials for our ELL teachers to use with their students, as well as to provide professional development and parent, act, um, parent involvement activities. We do have goals related to um, our federal program areas, and our first goal is to track our MAP data, so our performance on the state test. We don't have our 2017 results available, but we have seen over the flat, last few years is that scores in ELA have been fairly flat. Mathematics have been up and down, but it should be noted that in 2014, 15, and 16, each of those years we had different tests through different test vendors and different standards, so trying to track um, and compare those year to year gets a little tricky. But that is something we definitely do continue to monitor and use our title funds to help support. We also, our goal too, is to look at our students reading at or above grade level, and we use our STAR benchmark test to assess that. And so this past year, 
in uh, grades one, two, and four saw increases over the prior year. For our secondary students, they transitioned from the SRI, which is Scholastic Reading Inventory, to STAR, so cannot really compare as those are different tests. So 2017 will serve as our baseline for our secondary students. And we also have added, um, we have been very focused on developing common assessments aligned to the state standards. So we have now added in this goal area to look at student performance on our common assessments. At the elementary level, our goal is for 80% of students to score proficient on our local common assessments. And we did meet that goal this past school year. This was a new area for us to track for um, for secondary, so this will be our baseline. They did not quite meet the 80%, but again, we will now start tracking that out from year to year. Goal three looks at um, our preschool students, and our goal is that 75% of preschool students will meet the Missouri Early Learning Standards. They barely missed it in ELA this year. Um, they were at 74.8%, but with rounding up, we'll will say that they met 75, but they did see an increase over the prior year. And in math, they were at 77.3% proficient. In goal four, we look at um, supports for our English language learners. And I do want to provide some explanation around these scores. If you look at the average scale score from 2016 to 2017, you'll see a change of overall from a 332 to a 328, which does not look that like that large of a change. But if you look at the proficiency level of students as measured on the access test, it looks like there was quite a bit of change. And it shows that percent of students at a five or higher went from 36% to 7.6%. The test did not change. The scale scoring did not change. What they did change is where the cut scores would be for proficiency on this test to look at the um, rigors, rigor and the skills that our ELLs will need as they move through school and beyond school, so they have raised the bar significantly on that. So 2017 will now serve as our new baseline year. And goal area five is that 100% of teachers will be highly qualified, and we have met that the past three years. Are there any questions? Thank you. Any questions? Item 7D, Waynesville Middle School construction update. Dr. Berger? Yes, very excited after uh, we've been into the project a few weeks, and so we'll start getting some updates from uh, DHA, and Don Hussman is here tonight to present and get us up to speed. Thanks, Don. Thank you so much. Um, we've actually been at this a little bit longer than a couple of weeks. If you all recall, we, uh, construction kicked off, the I, I believe it was uh, – May the 10th, it might have been a day or two before that, but I think our official brown groundbreaking was on the 11th. Um, we've made a lot of headway, I think, since that date, although, you know, when you look at construction uh, as it's coming out of the ground, it always seems to be very slow, and it, and it is, and in this particular case, and why don't we just look at a few photographs. Uh, top right now, is it? Right, okay, here we go. Um, I've got some dates on on the bottom of these uh, images. So here it is at uh, May the 10th, and um, we see uh, pretty much the uh, the back of the middle school uh, before any substantial uh, uh, grades were changed back there. I believe that the field house was demolished uh, by this time. But it was the beginning, and uh, we, as I said, we've, we've been at it now about uh, two and a half months. Uh, one of the uh, early activities uh, was to begin to raise the elevation. If you recall, we are, we are um, filling under the floor slabs, and that is a result primarily because our lowest floor slab aligns with the, uh, with the lowest floor slab of, of the existing school. But if you remember, that um, floor slab had to be set at a at a dimension one foot above the base flood elevation, so that was kind of critical. 
During the design, we explored a number of different ways to uh, support that floor structure and found that the granular fill, and it's a real fine, I don't know if many of you have been on the site or not, but it's a real fine like uh, a, a ground limestone type rock. And then it is, I think this next image will show, and I, the, I'm, I apologize, these are a little dark. Um, this shows that that material being um, being placed, and then it's rolled. Uh, maybe the next image might show. There's a, no. I'll take that back. I, I, I had a, a one of the proof rolling trucks in there, and uh, they they roll and add moisture to that. That that is monitored at a consistent level so that we uh, um, uh, minimize any shrinkage as that uh, fill material is placed. And so if you walk on site now, that's primarily what you see out there. And um, it is, uh, well, this next next image shows the lay down area to the really the west of the school where all of the reinforcing is, is uh, shipped and then stockpiled. And then um, essentially all of the pieces are fabricated, but then the iron workers have to assemble that so that that goes into the uh, footings and foundation elements. Um, but um, once, once those pieces are, are bent in place, then everything is uh, very meticulously wire tied to one another and that forms essentially a cage within the uh, footings and, and uh, stem walls that will be poured as well as uh, the column footings. So once that granular fill has been placed, you can see here where it's been excavated. This was around June the 21st, so that's not too long ago. And that process is, is continuing. And here, um, this was uh, just the 5th of July. I believe you had a very big rain that morning. I know Brian Nash was down here and took these photographs and said <laughs> there's a lot of moisture, but it goes right in through that rock. So it does drain really quite well. Um, but those, uh, those walls are then uh, um, formed and then the forms are stripped and there's a there's a farming of one of the column footings and those um, bolts that are at the at the top of that farm that that really is the base plate for where structure will be bolted to a column uh, footing and the next image shows that footing and stem wall once those forms have been re uh, removed so that, that is essentially then all backfilled and then eventually th some of the next uh, uh, concrete construction activities will be pouring of the floor slab. Um, there, there are a lot of other activities that are happening on site as, as they're working through those, um, through all of that uh, formation of the concrete and that's all of the various utilities that go under the sl floor slab, there are drains, there are supply lines, there are electric lines. Um, I, I understand that you you had quite a, about, oh, I guess it was about, I think Kevin had, had mentioned to me, it was about a two week shutdown as electric was uh, changed over. And then um, I also understand we had a little bit of a, an occurrence where the contractor, as they were uh, driving those aggregate piers, actually penetrated an electric line that um, we didn't know was there adjacent adjacent to the high school gymnasium. So construction is continuing. Um, it will probably look like this for the greater part of the summer into, into September. There's a lot of work uh, still yet to happen before the structural steel will come. And then once that activity happens, then you really begin to see the, the building, the structure grow itself, and it really then begins to look more like a school. But if there are any questions I could I could answer either I can I'll answer those if I know them if I don't know the answer to the questions because I, I've only monitored I've only been down here for a cons one construction activity Brian Nash is a actually handling that in our office so Brian is pretty intimately familiar with um, with construction throughout the day any any questions no questions okay thank, thank you, you so much thanks Don. okay action item 8A, Sustainable Ozark Partnership, Dr. Henry. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. As uh, we, we heard during study session, we had representatives from the Sustainable Ozarks Partnership uh, speak with you about uh, the organization, uh, the, the change in structure they've had as far as a, a membership process uh, due to the work that they do for us at the local, state, national level. 
uh, as well as promotion of, of district initiatives at those levels. Uh, we are requesting uh, that we join uh, Sustainable Ozarks Partnership, uh, and the cost will be $5,000 for membership. Motion to support the recommendation. Mr. Make Keeling that makes that motion and second. Mr. Anderson seconds it. Seconds it. All those in favor? 6 0 Megan. 8B 2017 18 WCC Adult Student Handbook. Dr. Atkins. Thank you, Mr. President. In your board packets, you have the 2017 18 Waynesville Career Center Handbook for their adult students, and we request approval of the handbook as presented. Any questions? Motion. Motion to support, Mr. Anderson, and a second. I'll Mr. Second. Keeling seconds it. All those in favor? Six O, Megan. Eight C. Proposed job description. Second reading, Mrs. Bales. Thank you, Mr. President. The following attached job description is presented as a second reading 3.02.7 Extracurricular Advisor. Administration is requesting approval at this time, please. Any questions? May I have a motion? Mr. Fulmer, second by Mr. Quinn. All those in favor? 6 0, Megan. 8 E. Certificated and Classified Handbook Revisions, Mrs. Bales. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the district uh, would like to begin to implement a pre-note in order to our accommodate our bank's new uh, computer system. We want to avoid um, incorrect routing numbers ca causing our uh, inability to meet payroll deadlines, and it's important that we meet payroll for sure. So we are uh, requesting this change as presented. May I have a motion to support the recommendation? Mr. Quinn makes that motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Fulmer seconds it. All those in favor? 6 0. Did we skip something? Special Education 8D, Special Education Assurance Statement, Dr. Washington. Thank you, Mr. President. LEAs are required to have a board approved local compliance plan for special education which aligns with the current Missouri State Plan for Special Education. Whenever revisions and updates are made to the Missouri State Plan, LEAs must then revise their local compliance plan. The Missouri State Plan was updated in 2015 and 2016. The updates to the Missouri State Plan for Special Education have been approved by the State Board of Education and the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules. The Missouri State Plan is now published in the Code of Regulations and is expected to become final by the end of July. Administration is requesting approval of the Special Education Assurance Statement as presented. Any questions? May I have a motion to support the recommendation? Mr. Anderson with the motion, second by Mr. Deering. All those in favor? 6 0, Megan. 8 F, Dance Team Edition, Mrs. Bales. Thank you, Mr. President. Administration is requesting a motion to approve the addition of a high school dance team for the 2017 18 school year. Motion to support the recommendation. Mr. Quinn made the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Daring seconds it. All those in favor? 6 0. 8G, WCC salary increase, Mrs. Bales. Thank you, Mr. President. Administration is requesting uh, the approval of stipends uh, to be added to the agricultural, cosmetology, practical nursing, and CTSO departments as presented, please. We have a motion to, ma to support the recommendation. Moved. Dr. Fulmer made the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Anderson seconds. All those in favor? 6 0. Item 8H, textbook adoption, middle school and high school, Dr. Atkins. Thank you, Mr. President. We are requesting approval of textbook adoption as presented. This would be for middle school for the McGraw Hill Teen Health. And then at the high school level, we are adding advanced placement Spanish this year. So it would be textbooks for that course, as well as new text for our advanced placement US history class. And that class we expect to 
expand from 10 to 100 this year. So it was a good time to make the, the switch to a textbook that was more aligned to their AP curriculum. Okay. I need a motion to support your recommendation. May I have that motion? Make Mr. Motion. Keeler makes that motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Anderson seconds it. All those in favor? Six zero. Oh. Item 8I, Power School SPED proposal. Dr. Atkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as you all remember, last year we made the transition to our new, um, to the SunGuard family, and we moved our special education, finance, and student information system all into the SunGuard family, which was brought all of our products into one system. Uh, SunGuard was acquired by PowerSchool this past year, and while they intend to keep their, the financial pieces and the student information system as, as is, as they purchase them and then move forward with them, the special education software, they'll continue to support, but they're not going to move forward with enhancements. So we have the opportunity to move to the power school SPED, which would better meet the needs of our special education department, and we are requesting a proposal to make that transition. The year-to-year -year cost will be very comparable. We do realize that we went through a lot of change with this last year, and so our first group that would transition would be our uh, assessment team uh, to transition into the new system for um, writing their evaluation reports and then working with our special education <coughs> teachers that as IEPs come due for students that they would transition those into the new system gradually over the course of the upcoming months and to provide the training and support to allow that to happen as seamlessly as possible. So we are requesting an approval to move to power school SPED. I need a motion to support the request. Mr. Deering made that motion. May I have a second? Dr. Fomo seconds it. All those in favor? 6-0, Megan. Uh, before we adjourn, I'd just like to mention that uh, last Thursday and Friday, the board spent two days on our annual retreat, and uh, it was a very good retreat. We set goals for the upcoming year, and we heard a lot of information that uh, is really pertinent for board purposes, and uh, I just thought it was a really productive, very good board retreat. And we uh, have been doing that for about three or four years or longer. longer yeah. yeah, so it's, it's really good for the board to do that, so. Yeah, I, I would just add one thing to that, uh, Mr. O'Reilly, that in those in the, during those two days that we spent in the uh, in the retreat, the items of Power School, WCC salary, and dance team were were extensively discussed. Um, it probably looked like this evening they they we slid through them pretty pretty easy and pretty fast. Well, we spent two days discussing them <laughs> at a board retreat before we ever felt comfortable enough to to make these. Uh, Recommendations. Also, also made me make a comment that during the uh, the dance team discussion that we uh, we nominated uh, Dr. Fulman to be in charge of that. So <laughs> <laughs> I do seem to remember so that, Mr. Quinn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you better you better get out uh, your 40s and 50s music. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? I just kind of echo what you said. It, it was uh, uh, very beneficial. Uh, I always say, uh, actually, that I think was our seventh uh, year in a row of having those. Those those are two of the most beneficial days for our board, uh, not only for planning and uh, an assessment, but uh, also uh, for the board uh, uh, to get to know each other and. Uh, uh, when you're there around the table looking at each other, you know, you, you, you learn how to get along. Yep. You know. Uh, and the second thing I was going to say, Doctor, what Dr. Fulmer said, those items that he talked about, we talked about uh, along with probably uh, a half a dozen more things that sometime uh, in the future months of board meetings, there'll be something that comes up here. And uh, uh, I just want to let our, our folks out there on Channel 12 uh, know that we spend a lot of time studying and asking questions and discussion before it ever comes here uh, for uh, uh, for action. Yeah. 
it's a good time for all voices to be heard as board to treat. Everybody has time to put their input in and speak their piece, so to speak. And so it's, I think it was real successful. If there's no other business, I'll uh, make a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Mr. King makes a motion. May I have a second? Sure. Mr. Duran makes a second. All those in favor? 6-0, we are adjourned.